Good afternoon, friends. It's another day, and uh, today is going to be very, very powerful. We've got a very sensitive and very, very strong um, issue to discuss. And at any time, the matter of relationship and marriage and abuse, any time these issues are raised, oh my God, everybody becomes emotional because it's a very sensitive issue. And uh, But I found it to be a value system, and I discovered that if we do not do anything about it, nothing will be done and things will get worse in our society so the monster of abuse all across africa has reached a particular level that if we refuse to do something about it we will be handing over the button the button of abuse to our children and like i always say every new generation is an improvement on the previous if a father is beating up the mother the children we we almost kill their own wife when they get married <laughs> and so the, the, the tide and the menace of abuse is not only relevant to Africa, all across the globe. Abuse takes place in different homes between different people, but the differences between Africa and the West in particular are some of the issues I'm going to mention this morning. The systems and structures that have been put in place in the developed world to cop the menace of this. Every human being has the tendency to do evil. There is no black evil or white evil. Every human being has the tendency and trait to do evil. In fact, some of the evil and wickedness that people in the Western world do, if you hear it sometimes, you have had a case of a man that killed his wife and caught the wife into different whatever and then put her in a freezer. <laughs> These are the kind of unimaginable atrocity that you can find some white people commit. So, I am completely detribalized. I'm not picking on one tribe or one culture. We're just looking at truth here. Truth. And we are focusing on our own continent because of some prevalent problems we have in Africa that will make the matter of abuse to go out of hand if we do not do anything about it. Abuse is a terrible thing. Abuse has sent many people to untimely graves. Abuse has retarded many people. Abuse has thrown many people out of schools. Abuse has opened the door to depression. Abuse has led many people to commit suicide. Abuse has retarded children. Abuse has retarded, retarded women. Abuse has retarded men. The statistics on abuse that come out of Africa are alarming. So I've done some research on this and uh, I want us to discuss it. And uh, a lot of people have gone through enormous abuse in different forms and in different shades. There are different types of abuse. So I'm going to generalize and focus on, I'm not going to dig deep into this. This is a very serious subject. It's not a subject I can exhaust in an hour, but I'm just trying to direct our attention to a very critical subject matter that you must not allow yourself to get away with as you go into 2018. If you have been involved in any kind of abuse, please, please, I want to implore you, you have the power to stop it. Like I always tell people, of course, I'm a pastor and I will always look at issues from a biblical point of view. But I don't want to go spiritual now. I want to make it very, very secular. Occasionally, I might throw in one or two spiritual terminologies or whatever, but I will make it very, very secular and discuss from the point of research. From the point of research. I am never in support of any form of abuse. And so, I don't speak privately about truth. I speak publicly about it. If you want to be a great leader, there is a difference between speaking privately and speaking publicly. So, there is a way you can speak the truth in love. There is a, there is a way you can correct people and speak to them by not pulling them down and they will listen to you. So, I don't, I don't speak in the privacy of my room what I see that is wrong. I say it publicly. And when I stand up on the altar to speak as a pastor, I don't look at people's face. I just begin to talk, begin to talk, begin to talk. And so this afternoon, I will be very, very private. I, I probably will be introducing one or two, three different stories of some people, but I will try as much as possible to remove their details. People confide in you. People come to you. You counsel them as a pastor. And they give you very, 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 very confidential information. So I don't 
all of the ethics of uh, uh, of being a clergy or being a pastor. In fact, you don't even have to be a pastor. Right? Well, I mean, wherever you are, wherever you are, I'm going to do a teaching on keeping secrets. It's a value system. I will do it before the year turns around. We have 31 different value system to touch. This is a night edition. And today is going to be explosive. So you don't have to be a Christian or a pastor to know how to keep secrets. Everybody must be able to keep secrets and everybody must be able to walk and in decency. Now, something that I found out that stunned me is this. 51% of African women, they suggest or they conclude that it is justified that their spouses or their husbands beat them. If they've done something that warrants being beaten, I could not believe my ears. Now, these statistics didn't come from Nigeria or from Ghana. All the countries in Africa, Chad, Algeria, whatever, they did a random sampling and they surveyed people. And averagely, one out of every two women agree that abuse is right. I said, what kind of nonsense is this? What kind of nonsense is this? Obviously, women are more abused than men. Men are more uh, men are abused as well, but women are more prone to abuse than men, and that is why some of the things I'm going to say may relate more to women. But I'm making it general. I've met a lot of men that have been abused, and that there are different types of abuse. I mean, it's not just limited to physical abuse, and so we want to learn. And I, I'm just a channel as I'm speaking to you. I am learning from the process myself. I'm just a facilitator, and I want you to listen to it. And let's make a change out of our society. Let's change at our hand. If you change and I change and 10,000 of us change, we will have a much better country to call our home, wherever you are living. Now, about one third of African women reports that they have experienced domestic violence of any kind, sexual, physical. About one third. So women are like an endangered, endangered species. Let me use our endangered species. And any society that does not take care of children, of women, of elders, even, uh, even of men, is a terrible a society that might go into extinction very soon. And so the scale is tilting towards the woman and it's very bad. There is no difference. A man is not superior to a woman. We have different roles. We have different roles. What you can do as a man, a woman may not be able to do it. And what you can do as a woman, a man may not be able to do. In fact, there are many things a woman can do that a man cannot do. I have not found a man that can give birth to a child. I was hearing a story a few, few days back. All of these uh, scientists, they've begun, they've begun to do some experiment trying to make a man get pregnant. No way. No way. That is the exclusive preserve of a woman. Abuse is very horrible. Now, many people don't know the consequences of abuse. And I'm going to be telling you different types of abuse and their consequences. And how these things are ravaging Africa. Now, the society we have in Africa does not take care of women very well. Does not take care of children very well. Does not take care of adults and, sorry, elderly people very well. And conversely, if you look at a typical Western environment, they have provisions for people that are elderly. They have elderly care homes. When people pay taxes, the taxes are channeled towards some of those things. So when you mention the matter of corruption, corruption is a very terrible thing. What corruption does to society is far deeper and greater than what many of us think it does. Because the money that should be directed and channeled towards taking care of women, taking care of pregnant women, taking care of children, taking care of, 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 of the elderly, the money is being siphoned by a few group of people. And so... From a biblical standpoint, from a, if you're a Christian, listen to me. The Bible tells us that a woman is a weaker vessel. Now, weakness is not inferiority. Weakness in that context is not inferiority. If you compare egg, the egg that we fry, and you compare it to a stone. Now, the egg relatively is weaker than the stone, but the egg is a thing of treasure. The egg is a thing that should be cherished. The egg is a thing that should be taken care of. So that word weakness doesn't mean inferiority. So when you hear men say a woman is a weaker vessel, oh, she's, she's no. In fact, every man that is listen to me here knows that women are actually most are actually stronger than men. <laughs> if you have ever visited your wife in the labor room, you will know that women are stronger than men. You know, one day, you know, I have had some problems with my teeth. I have gone to the dentist. 
to take away my teeth. And so, any time my wife goes with me to the dentist, if you see the way I will begin to hold the hand of the doctor, when they put syringe in my gums, and they are trying to apply anesthesia, and I will say, no, 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 don't do it. Of course, I don't cry there, I mean, I'm an adult, but the level of pain I with it, and my wife will be laughing at me. And she'll be telling me, if you know how many syringe they put on me when I was giving back to our first son, and I didn't even make any noise. Said, ah, but it appears as if men are stronger than women. No, the kind of capacity that a woman has to bear pain, the capacity of a woman, the word woman stands originally from, from Hebrew, womb man, interpreted from the word called womb man, a man that has a womb. The word womb is originally from the word soil. So when you plant anything in the soil, it brings forth a lot of fruit, bigger than what you plant. So when a man puts his seeds in a woman, the woman has the ability to fertilize whatever and to cook up those things and bring out a child. So anyone that can carry a human being in his stomach, you should know that he's stronger than you as a man. <laughs> and so there was another day I went to a doctor who I, asked to, I was asked to go and do a uh, kind of a blood test for certain things. And so when I entered the laboratory, oh my goodness, I don't like anything called syringe. I don't like injection. Injection is not apple drink. Injection is not apple drink. Anything, anytime I see syringe, I don't want to see it. Even when I was growing up. So every time my mom took me to the doctor and they gave me two options, syringe or tablet, I said, tablet. <laughs> you will, you're going to take one syringe and that will be all. But you will take this tablet five times, three times a day, one week, I will take it. Make even if there are 1,000 tablets in that bottle, I will take it. Syringe, I don't want syringe. <laughs> and so and I took it, I, I imbibed this attitude until I grew up and I became, became an adult. And so I went to the doc doctor, was trying, you know the way doctors do the syringe, it was doing like this. And I was already getting agitated. My wife was laughing. So what is wrong with this man? Ah, you don't like syringe. And they put a syringe on my hand to take the blood and I was screwing my face. And, and they put something there like a spirit. Uh, and it's, I mean, it, it, it created a kind of an effect on my hand and whatever. What am I saying? I had that impression that because I'm a man, I'm stronger than my wife. Now, there is a difference between brain and brawn. Brawn, B-R-A-W-N, is different from B-R-A-I-N. Brawn is the physical strength that men have. <laughs> All the greatest men in the world that you have had that were brought down, some of them, if not the majority of them, were brought down by a woman. Because of the kind of creative power women have. And they can direct it to do things positive. They can direct it to do things negative. And so this afternoon, I'm trying to paint a scenario that a society that trivializes women, debases women, and now extends this, this debasement to elderly people and children, that society can never grow to its optimal status. And that is why you find a lot of women finding their way to Europe. Some of them do it in horrible ways. Some of them do it in incriminating ways. But they just want to live in an environment where they'll be taken care of. And so, let me tell you the different types of abuse that exist in relationships. The different types of abuse. Now, there are about several different types. There could be more. There is what is called discriminatory abuse discriminatory abuse now when a parent begins to discriminate against a child in favor of another child it is called abuse in him in child psychology it is called abuse it is called abuse and now a man can actually discriminate against his wife there are men that use their family members their sisters their brothers so they use their wives as baits for their family member. There are some women that use their husbands as bait. Anything that has to do with that man will be debased and given a second priority. Anything that has to do with your brother or your sister, you elevate it above your wife. And the woman or the man feel discriminated against. It is a form of abuse. Now, in Africa, there are so many tendencies, so many cultures that we imbibe. When someone is coming to your house in Africa, he doesn't have to give, a, give you a notice. People just barge into your house. In fact, some people come to your house and they just tell you, I'm coming to spend a weekend with you. Now, when I, when I began to live overseas, I discovered that people would have to call their friend and tell them they are coming and get an approval. <laughs> and get an approval. You see, when I came overseas some years back, one of my friends called me 
and asked me to come and pick up my letters because when I was coming into the country, I didn't have a letter box. So I used a letter box as my letter box. So all my mails were going to a place. So I was expecting a very important mail, and so I used her address. So on the day that the mail came, she called me to come by, I think 6 p.m. or thereabout. And I said I was coming. 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., I didn't go. I got there around 9 p.m. When I got in, front, got in front of the door, I pressed the bell. Nobody opened the door. I pressed the bell again. It was very cold. The snow was pouring down. I pressed the bell. She didn't open the door. And I was hearing the sound of music. I knew they were in the house. I pressed the bell. They didn't open the door. And then I called my wife. And I asked my wife to call their number. Because I wasn't with, I mean, with my phone. My wife called their number. The number was ringing. And I was hearing the number ringing. I knew she would have looked at the number. I would have seen my caller ID. She did not pick the number. I pressed the bell again. The door, the bell, the, the, the doorbell. I was hearing the bell ringing. She didn't open. I was there for like 30 minutes. I was freezing outside. I was so angry. I was mad with her. And I left. The second day, she sent me a text. I asked you to come by 6 o'clock. You came by 9. I was already upstairs. I couldn't believe my ears. This is an African lady. We are still friends here today. That is a culture. Of course, what she did was an extreme. What I'm, what I'm saying is this. We live in a culture in Africa where the rights and privileges of people are constantly violated. People's wills are violated. People's rights and authority and privileges are violated. Our society is not one that respects rights and privileges. And it starts from the top, from the governor to the governed. The people at the top are the worst nightmares of Africans. The people at the top. Africa has been blessed by wicked, useless leaders. Because it takes one leader to change a whole nation. I've said this many times. One tree does not make a forest. That statement doesn't apply in leadership. One leader can ruin a whole country. One leader can change the course of history. In football, that proverb might apply. One person cannot make a success in football. If you have a team of 11 players, you've got to pass the balls to, your, to one another until you score the goals, but not in leadership. Even if everybody in the country has a PhD degree from Harvard and you put a useless leader as their president, you have finished those people. You have finished them. They might just need to write down a make a law or draft a policy and say everybody that is looking for a job in this country, you must be minimum of age 70. <laughs> and any other person that is lower than that age cannot get a job. And people will be groaning regardless of their degree. So leadership is very crucial. So the reason why a lot of abuses are taking place in Africa, in places like Nigeria, Ghana, is because the leaders that are different cadres of governance, they know nothing about the value and virtues of stemming the tide of abuse. They see it as normal. Many of them grew up from environments and homes where their parents were abusive against one another. So that's very normal, very natural. So when you live in that environment, children learn from what they see more than what they hear. And so when you grow in that environment, you imbibe those traits and then you become, you become a leader, a principal or a university don or whatever, and you begin to abuse people. So there is discriminatory abuse. There is financial abuse. Very terrible type of abuse. When one party uses financial strength, to deliberately manipulate or punish the other. Deliberately. Now, I'm not saying that, I mean, in cases where somebody is poor or he has no job, that is not abuse. Deliberate. Your husband has money. You are the only wife. You know he has money. But he's using his money to punish and control you. If you behave well, he will give you what you need. If you don't behave well, he won't give you. Now, this statement is relevant to, to Africans. In the Western world, the wife, even no, 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 let me correct that. In some part of Africa, because now in Africa, now many women are being liberated and are working and making their own money. So you don't have to wait for I me mean, with your husband. But there are still certain groups of women that still live in total dependence on their husband. So in that case, the man will use financial strength to manipulate and oppress the woman. It is an abuse. And I have had cases where it was women, it was a woman. 
that used a financial strength. Now, the man lost a job, lost his job. The woman was working. And so, you guess what was going to happen? The woman begins to use her financial status to oppress the man. And the man feels dejected. The man feels abused. Oh, it's because I'm not working. And then you are the one working and paying the bills. And then abuse starts. So many grades and shades of financial abuse. In fact, there are parents that use financial strength to abuse their children. I know parents that decide to punish their children before because they converted from Islam to Christianity. I've had several cases like that. There is a lady that I am speaking to now whose parents have done that to her. She converted to Christianity from Islam and they vowed, we withdraw our support from you. And she told them, even if I will die, I will not change my mind. And the lady is living from hand to mouth. Financial abuse. It is a very strong weapon. Very strong weapon. There is another abuse called neglect. 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 And that occurs sometimes among couples, husband and wife. Either party neglects the other. Sometimes the neglect is conscious. Sometimes the neglect is 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 uh, circumstantial. Something happened, the man's job takes him out of town, or the man becomes busier than usual than, than, than usual. And but if it is not out of a self we out of a deliberate, deliberate attempt to punish or to abuse the woman, the man can easily correct himself and adjust. But some people do it deliberately. And I know cases of men that take their wife abroad, abandon the woman there, the children, and go back to Africa. And be jumping around with other women in Africa. Deliberate neglect. The man will not come back to check on the wife. All of these things have ferocious consequences. I'm just telling you the types of abuse. I will very much, I mean, I'm very soon I'll go into the consequences. Now there is physical abuse, which is the worst of them all. Physical abuse is the worst of them all because it connects directly to your life and the ability to live to see the second day. Now, you will agree with me that we live in a generation where the spate of physical abuse among Africans, particularly in marriages, has skyrocketed. The man beating the wife, the wife beating the man. Physical abuse takes so many shapes. There have been cases when parents want to punish their children and they inflict bombs and wounds on the bodies of their children because they want to punish the child. You cannot try some of these things in the Western world. You will go to jail for it. You can't try it. Even though they do some things to the extreme in the West, which I don't agree with sometimes, that actually encourages, when they ban all forms of physical discipline, which sometimes encourages children to go away, to go astray. So things have to be balanced. Things have to be balanced. Physical abuse is horrific. Physical abuse is horrific. It can lead to death. Many men have died because of physical abuse from their wife. There's a story going on in an African country now where the wife picked up a knife and stabbed his, her husband. And they have, they, have, they have been doing that case for like eight Eight, like four or five years, maybe like four years or so, three or four years. Until recently, when a judgment was passed and the woman was sentenced to seven years in jail for killing her husband. That is what we call travesty of judgment. Misapplied judgment. The woman will spend seven years and come back and remarry and start enjoying her life. The man is gone. And the man was the breadwinner of his family, <laughs> his own family. That is the consequences, one of the consequences of physical abuse. I don't, as a pastor, I don't encourage people to divorce. I stick to the tenet of scripture. But if on the ground of sexual morality and the man cannot forgive the wife after all persuasion and the woman cannot forgive her husband after more persuasion and she he or she wishes to, to leave, that is up to them. If it is not on grounds of sexual morality, if it is on ground of physical abuse, and we walk, we watch the situation, and it appears as if it's degenerating into severe violence. Then I advise that person to take a step away. I'm not saying you divorce. You cannot live under the same room roof with a man that is threatening you with knife, threatening you with gun, and is throwing things at you. One day you wake up in the middle of the night and suffocate you. So it's only the person that is alive to set you quarrel that will set you quarrel. So in that context, we don't tell people again now stay there. 
Because we have seen so many cases of untimely death. Not all pastors are foolish now. Not all pastors are foolish. <laughs> Some of us are getting wiser now. We don't tell people to stay inside abusive, particularly physically abusive relationship. Because when you are dead, every option for reconciliation has died. All the dreams you are having have died. Every achievement you may have in your heart has died. And so it's only a living person that has the ability to reconcile. So physical abuse is more prevalent in Africa. It is more prevalent in Africa. It is more prevalent in Africa because of the kind of society we have. Because of the kind of society we have. Now there is what is called psychological and emotional abuse. Silent treatment. Perception of uncaring attitude. When one party perceives the other, he doesn't care for me. And the other person is deliberately, deliberately putting up that attitude. The wife is sick and it is during the period of sickness that the man is throwing a party. The husband is sick and admitted into the hospital and the wife is booking a vacation to Dubai. That is what is called psychological and emotional abuse. And the woman will say, oh my goodness, of all the people in the world that should cancel their vacation and stay with me in the hospital, you should be number one. But the man has bought a ticket. Of course, he has paid the hospital bill, but he has bought a ticket. He has gone to Dubai for vacation while the wife is in the hospital. Groaning under an incurable disease. That is called emotional and psychological abuse. We have had so many cases of that. We have read it in newspaper. We have watched many people go through that experience. It is very subtle. Deliberate silent treatment over a prolonged period of time. Now, if you are married, there will always be one or two challenges, disagreements between husband and wife, and then you are not talking to, I mean, talking to each other over a period of a time, a day or whatever, or two. I've met people who didn't speak to each one another for a week. I have a friend, a pastor, uh, sorry, the wife of a pastor, who wasn't speaking to his, to his, to her husband for close to a year, and they were in the same house. Of course, they exchange, you know, this short version, this short version greeting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you hungry? No. Yes. They were not in active communication for close to a year. And when she told me, I screamed. And they are not asking, and you climb the altar to preach every Sunday. You are, you are a hypocrite. You are deceiving yourself. Because the Bible says, if you have anything against anybody, and you want to come and offer your gift on the altar, you stop first and go and sort out that issue before you offer that gift. So all the gifts offered to God, they are contaminated, polluted gifts for the past one year. I think they have resolved it now. Emotional and psychological abuse protracted. I'm not speaking of mistakes. We are all human. There, will, you can, there can never be one marriage that is perfect. You will have challenges. You will sometimes couple shout on one another for so many reasons and they come back again, apologize. And I'm not speaking of that. One once in a while issue and disagreement, I'm speaking of people who consciously, over a prolonged period of time, afflict their husband with emotional and psychological abuse. There is sexual abuse, a very terrible monster. Wow. Terrible monster. I've spoken to a couple of people in my lifetime who have poured their hearts to me that their husband is stabbing them deliberately of sex or their wife is stabbing them deliberately of sex and when they begin to speak to you and you follow their thoughts and you you can you, you can't even imagine what they have gone through in different parts of africa sexual abuse is terrible it's terrible if i have to put it on a scale i'll put physical abuse as number one i put sexual as number two because it opens the door to all kinds of affliction, all kinds of trouble. It opens the door for infidelity. The woman or the man that is being abused will be tempted to look for an alternative. And after she or she has gone out of a matrimonial home, the other party will not tell her, it is because you wanted to do it before. It is not because I was abusing you. And the marriage breaks down irretrievably. And I know of a particular friend who would use sexual abuse 
to punish the, the wife anytime they have issues. Anytime they, they have issues, that was his own way of saying, I'm angry. Not for one day, not for two days. I'm talking about like for a prolonged period of time. There are so, in fact, this thing is so rampant, it is worse among Christians. I'm sorry, I'm a pastor. It is worse among Christians. And if you hear the stories of so many Christians, now when one party knows that the other party is a Christian, is a child of God, he wouldn't go out and to go and commit adultery. They begin to use sexual weapon as a form of abuse. You, I know you will not go out. I know of a pastor whose wife will oppress him. In Africa, in Africa, I know of a pastor whose wife will op you cannot go out. If you go out, I will go to church and tell the whole church that you are sleeping around. But I will punish you. The wife will be telling the pastor. Some of them allow themselves to be to be used by the devil to destroy the, the, the wife's ministry, the husband's ministry. I know a particular story. The wife punished the man for like six months. This is a man that was counseling different women. Different women. You know what happened? They had a disagreement and the wife said, you will not touch me. Six months. In fact, he was climbing to 12 months. One day, the man sat in his office in Africa. I won't mention the country. The man sat in his office and he was a shadow of himself. The secretary was a lady. The secretary had been trying to woo the man. You have been moody for the past few months. You used to be very charming. You used to be very loving and very outspoken. What has come over you, sir? And the man wouldn't discuss the private issue because it was a very sensitive issue. One day that man couldn't cope again. He opened up to the secretary. And the secretary said, you have been going through this all these months? One day came. One day we always come. The secretary went to him and said, sir, can I help you? Sir, can I help you? I just want to help you. Right in the office of the pastor, he slept with that secretary. You know what happened? The matter became exposed to the wife. The wife went to the church. The old church had the church scattered. The ministry closed down. And the man, as of today, I don't even know where he is now. Whether he is still a pastor or not. That is one angle, that is one direction, one dimension of the consequence of sexual abuse. It is a horrible thing. It can open the door to sickness and diseases. When people go outside of the matrimonial home, they contract disease, they bring it deliberately. I know couples that bring diseases and sickness deliberately to their spouse at all to punish her. You you, you didn't allow me to touch you. Okay, now he has contracted HIV and he will hide this from the wife and deliberately transmit that disease to the wife. Sexual abuse is a horrific thing. And many people, majority of whom are Christians, use this weapon to punish their husband and their wives. If you are using this weapon to punish your wife or your husband and you have even used it in 2017, I want to plead with you, forgive that man, forgive that woman. The consequences might be greater than what you can imagine. The consequences might, might be greater. You will put yourself in a position where the man or the woman will be looking for people. There are cases where they accuse a man that is raping his wife. I have never heard that before. Until a few years back, we began to hear legal cases where a man was sued to court for, for raping his wife. And women for raping their, their husband. Most of the times, what leads to that is... When there is a prolonged incidence of sexual abuse at home, and the man will go and look for something that we that will make the woman to be unconscious and then rape the wife, <laughs> or the woman will look for something and then the, the whole matter degenerates and becomes a crisis. These are the things that are heating up Africa. A lot of sexual abuses are going on. There are cases where the husband is being denied of sex, but they have a house help. And the man could not cope any longer and begins to jump on the on the house help. By the time the woman finds out, it becomes a disaster. The marriage breaks apart. Maybe the child, the, the house help is even is even pregnant already. And I've had cases where the house help has taken over the husband, and the husband has chased away the wife because of sexual abuse. After physical abuse, the next worst type of abuse is sex is horrible sexual abuse particularly for men because women are stronger than men for my findings a woman can stay without having sex three months six months two years men are not wired like that 
I am not speaking of people going outside to sleep. I'm talking of married people now. I'm a man of God and I will never, under any condition, encourage anyone to have sex outside of marriage. It is never acceptable. It is never permitted. If you have done it before, God will forgive you, desist from it, and straighten up your life. If you are still doing it, the consequences are devastating. I have never met or found or read about any man who continues to sleep around. Now, mark my words. I'm not saying people who have done it and have repented and have stopped. You continue to sleep with women. Continue. That ends well. I don't know of any. If you have any example like that, let me know. I have not met one man consistently. Consistently. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. They don't end well. Is that they die untimely? Is that they contract a disease? Is that they are, they are fired from their job? Or their business collapses? Or all kinds of problems. <laughs> All kinds of problems. 10 minutes enjoyment to create 10 years of disaster and trouble. And that is the same thing that is ravaging many other parts of Africa. Sexual abuse is horrible. So you don't want to go to 2018 with the mindset of, I will punish that woman. I will deal with her. I will deal with her. And then there are some men, the abuse that they give their wife is that they will not even sleep with the woman. They will bring the friend of the woman into the matrimonial home and make sure that the wife catches them in the very heart just to taunt the woman and to abuse her sometimes maybe that man has done something for the woman and the woman knows that if she makes noise and publicizes that thing she's gonna lose maybe the man was the one that bailed her out sometimes when people are sharing secrets the woman stole something or did something terrible that the police must not air and the man is aware of it the man will not begin to use sexual weapon to punish a woman and the woman cannot talk because the man will tell if you report me i will expose you to all kinds of horrible things going on among africans like i said when i began these things happen among white people too but i'm not their their, their, their systems and their structures are organized to tackle some of those things better than we so we're going to look at some of those things we can use to tackle them but let me just concentrate on africans now and like i'm speaking to you i'm speaking to myself there are times when there are challenges, there are disagreements at home, and between husband and wife, and you know to move near, near each other, that is understandable. But not when you become, when you make a career and a job out of, I will be using sexual weapon to punish my husband. There are women who use sexual weapon as a bait to collect favor from their husband. That is called manipulation. It is witchcraft. It is witchcraft. Witchcraft is not somebody going under the tree and talking to Satan. Anything that makes people to do anything for you outside of your will is called witchcraft. Anything that makes people to give you anything outside of your will is called witchcraft. Whatever method you use to get it, either you use, you induce them financially or anything that makes people to give you any favor outside of your will, they are not willing to do it. But because you, you are grabbing them on the neck, using a kind of a bait and they don't have any choice but to give it to you that is called witchcraft there are women who use their body to control their man it is witchcraft it has severe consequences it has severe consequences there are men that are graduates that have phds in doing the same thing and they will split their room and for one year at a stretch they will go and be sleeping in another room and keep the woman in another room i i, I can tell you stories here all kinds of stories i know the story of a woman who deliberately uses her body to oppress the wife that's only the the, the the husband anytime the husband wants to meet with her she tells the husband she's not ready she's studying she's not ready she's studying eventually one thing led to another thing the man became sick the man became sick and as of today both the man and the woman cannot even meet each other now because the man is not even in the position to have sex again for the rest of his life so, and the woman cannot go outside of marriage so she should be busy with her academics <laughs> all kinds of experiences husbands running after house helps because they are depressed there are people that do those things out of greed there are people that their wives satisfy them but out of greed they still run after sexual immorality those ones are different there are women that their husband satisfies them, but they still go out or do horrible things 
to get themselves uh, um, to abuse their husband. Those, those are different extreme cases. I'm speaking of people who willingly, people who willingly decide to punish their spouses and use sex as a weapon. It is horrible. It is tearing Africa apart. It, it, is, it opens the door to sickness, to diseases. It opens the door to violence, to attack. It opens the door to depression, to untimely death, sometimes to suicide. The last on the list is verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. When you use your mouth, the same mouth you have used to say, I love you, to a man or to a woman, you use the same mouth to throw foul languages, to throw foul words. At the other party, Africans have PhDs in that. You are a fool. You will never end well. This is how your mother began too, and she was thrown out of her husband's house. You all kinds of horrible languages that Africans use. And the more you speak those languages to people, the more you kill their morale. Verbal abuse kills people's morale. Oh, you may not even end well. Are you sure you're going to end well? Are you sure you ever make it? You this all kinds of terrible things I can't be saying here. <laughs> Some years, many, many years back, one man of God was sharing a story. He said he used to live in a particular house, and very close to his house was a man. He was married to another woman, and every night they were always fighting. And because they were Muslims, they would fast during the day and break at night. They would break. And wake up in the middle of the night to eat. And the man will be heaping every causes. The man said every duty causes on the wife. And they are fasting. And they are fasting. And like, ah, will you do well? You will never do all kinds of terrible things. You find these things prevalent. Even among educated Africans. You don't even have to go into, into marriages. Even right on our roads. Right on our roads. Any little provocation opens the door to every duty, curses, and abuses. And what you say on the road, you will say it in the room. It's a matter of time. What you say in the room, you will say it on the road. So if you are fond of cursing your wife or cursing your children or cursing your husband, when you go, if you can curse your husband, how would you curse people on the road? People you don't know. It is the easiest thing on earth for you to do. It is the easiest thing. What that thing does to the society in Africa cannot be imagined. Cannot be imagined. Because words are very, very powerful. Let me tell you, there is no word that you speak that is an empty word. There is no word that you speak. Wake up in the morning and begin to say negative words about yourself. Everything you say will happen. It may not happen in 10 years. It may not happen in 20 years. It will happen. Begin to say negative things happen faster and quicker than positive things. Verbal abuse. Using foul languages that demean people. Now, let me tell you. What are the consequences of abuse to Africans? Number one, it shapes our behavior. One day I took a picture. I was in a train. In a, in a country, a western country, and I just recorded what was going on in the train, like two minutes video, and I posted that video, I sent it to my sister in Africa, and she said, everybody in the train was reading newspaper. They wanted, don't they talk to one another, I just smile. He said, if you enter any bus or train in my country, everybody will be chatting and shouting and yelling. At, but I, I just, it was, this was not even an executive train. A train in the public's public domain, everybody was jumped. Everybody was my you. Everybody was carrying their phone, and I'm reading on their phone, reading a magazine. That is culture. Their society abhors the use of abusive, violent words. If you speak to a bus driver in an abusive way, they call the police on you. So many of us, when we came abroad, we behaved ourselves. We behaved ourselves. You, you, you can't try it. You can't try, even if you speak, no matter how angry you are, you control yourself. They will put the notice on the door of the train and the bus. Any abusive word or any insult to the bus driver will be reported to the police immediately. And they will get you. Because there's camera everywhere. You cannot escape. <laughs> they will get you.
they will get you. So that results into what is called decency. Immediately you travel back to a, an African country, maybe you enter the capital of Togo, you enter Lome, or you enter Accra. As you enter, you are coming from Germany, you are coming from Australia, you know you are already arrived in Africa. <laughs> People will be heaping causes and abuses. These things can be changed. The white man is not different from the black man. Why did we find it easy to change when we came abroad? For some of you that have come abroad, why did we behave ourselves? That means we have the ability to change. We just, we just don't want to change. <laughs> Nobody gave me any injection before I changed. It's not because I'm a pastor. Before I became a pastor, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I wasn't using Hebrew I don't use foul languages. Not even to my children to, or to anyone. But nobody gave me injection or gave me pills to use to learn how to speak with, to people professionally. Gracious words. When people insult you, go on Facebook. Oh my God. Go on Facebook and read the comments of our African brothers and sisters and see how they are heaping curses and abuses on one another on Facebook. Now you have not even seen that person's face. You don't know the person you are speaking to. And people will be heaping curses. People cannot sit together for five minutes and analyze issues critically. People cannot sit together. You, you hardly find, you hardly read three, four comments on Facebook and you will not be bored and annoyed. Every lens, every lie in that conversation is laced with abuse and insult. People cannot engage in matured conversation in Africa. What is responsible for these things? Our value system towards abuse. It is ingrained in us. It is part and parcel of us, but it is not a permanent feature of us. Because when many of us came abroad, we changed. We changed. When the conductor of a bus provokes me, I keep my mouth shut. Even when I'm provoked, I have been provoked many times. When I call the customer service of a company and they are messing up my services, my phone service, I generally insult them. Your, in fact, they will tell you that your conversation is being recorded. They will tell you this conversation is being recorded and will be used for quality and training. It is a lie. They have set a trap to catch people that will use abusive language against their staffs and they will trace your number and arrest you. So we all behave ourselves. That will lead me shortly to some of the things we must do in Africa and that you too must do in your home. Charity begins at home. If the people at the top, our leaders, if they are not ready for change, then let the change begin with us. Let the change, I know how strategic the role of leaders are, I've said it many times, but let the change begins with us. Maybe we force them to change. <laughs> maybe instead of them forcing us to change, maybe we will force them to change. Verbal abuse must not be part of your life in 2018. Even when your wife provokes you, even when your husband provokes you, there must be a minimum level of expectation from you. He will never use that word. Let me not deceive you, you will be provoked. You will be offended. You will get annoyed. Somebody will step on you. Whether you are in traffic, or you are in the bank, or you are on the phone, or you are at home, or you are in the stadium, somebody will offend you. Do you reply that person back by insulting his mother? Or insulting his father? And then, what does that do to you? It makes you feel well. It doesn't make you feel well. When you use such languages, you are debasing yourself. You are bigger than that. Anytime I don't exchange, I don't I hardly go on Facebook and and communicate with people and we are discussing on issues because I hate insults. I don't insult people and I hate insults. So when I see any provocative thing on the Facebook, I just hide it and I go my way. I may now go into my private messenger and have decent conversation with people. Immediately I see you send insult, I just remove you. I either unfollow you or remove you from my friend friend friends list. Because I don't want you to, that person to contaminate me. And because by the time the person is pouring insult on me, pouring it on me, people are reading it from other parts of the world, it can degenerate to other things. Facebook is like a market now. All kinds of people are on Facebook. The same people, the mad people, the sick people, the good people, the rich people, the poor people, witches and wizards. Every is a market. It is a market. 
all kinds of people, the Illuminati, the occultic people, they are all on Facebook. So you don't see their faces, we just see their pictures. So when you are chatting with people and they are abusing you, using foul language, and you begin to reply them with abuse, you are bringing down yourself to their level. You are bringing down yourself to their level. You are better than that. You and I should make our value system a magnetic force that will draw other people to change. If they are not willing to change, then we stay with our value system. One day they will change. So, abuse of any kind, whether discriminatory or financial or neglect or physical or emotional or sexual or verbal, shape behavior. Your behavior will change when you are under abuse. It will change. It may not change now. I want to see children that grow up from an abusive environment. They are copying the traits of their parents. Children learn faster by saying things than by, than by hearing. What you as parents do, shape your children. And when they get married or they get into the relationship, they will begin to beat up one another. It is what they see that they will replicate. Nothing shapes children like the lifestyle of their parents. Children will be shaped in their schools too, but what they experience at home is the strongest influence in their life. I am not a child psychologist, but psychologists will tell you the role of parents in the life of children. Even when you are angry with your husband, don't exchange those arguments and hot words when the children are watching you. Send them out of the room. Or you can defy the time of your reconciliation at another time. When they, were, I mean, they would have gone to school. Abuse shapes people. And once you are shaped, to reshape you may take time. That is why some people enter marriage and they begin to transfer what they have carried over from their parents into the marriage. This is how my father behaved my mother. And they begin to behave the same way, unconsciously. This is how my mother behaved to my father. Abuse reflects social norms towards conflict resolution. It is the way the society is that people that are in relationship will most likely behave. If you are in a society that allows women to be beaten and there is nothing wrong with it and you do not curtail and control yourself, you will be looking for every opportunity to use beating to correct your wife. The marriage breaks apart and you lose your value as a man. Real men don't beat their wife. Real women don't beat their husband. Raising the hand, they tell our children abroad there. They will say, hands are not for eating. <laughs> it's a poem in class. Hands are not for eating. My children will tell me when they get home from school, hands are not for eating. They taught us in class. Hands are not. When your hand is scratching, you put it in your pocket. The last thing you want to do is to raise that finger and hit that man or hit that woman. Immediately you do, you apologize, but the damage has been done. Apology does not heal mental wounds quickly. It doesn't heal mental, mental wounds are dangerous. Mental wounds can stay for 50 years. The person has accepted your apology, but he will never forget that you have hit her before. He will, he will say that story to someone that is close, that you don't know. Hey, the day my wife slapped me. The day my husband slapped me. So even when that hand is coming up, just put it down. I know you can be provoked as a man. I know you can be provoked as a woman. But control yourself. If you carry poison in your hand in a cup, and you're about to sip it, that cup contains a very beautiful wine. The wine you have been dreaming to drink. Like South African wine. I don't drink alcoholic wines. I mean, that's me. I don't like it. So I just drink my, I mean, I mean, normal wines. So you have a wine in your cup that is made from South Africa that you love. And you're both sipping it. And so he screams. There is poison in it. Do you scream it? You, do you drink it? What is the force that makes you drop it? You don't have to be a Christian to drop that cup. Ah, I'm going to die if I drink this thing. So no, you, every man has the ability to control his emotion. Every man has, no matter how angry you are, anger is not demonic. Anger is not demonic. Anger is part of our makeup as human beings. In fact, the Bible says be angry, but see not. <laughs> anger is not demonic. It only depends on how you manage the anger and the direction that you turn the anger to. If you are angry against ungodly things, is that demonic? 
If you are angry against sin, is that demonic? If you are angry against greed, is that demonic? It depends on where you turn it to and how you apply that anger. So when the anger is about to be applied to slapping your husband, you control yourself. A man or a woman that cannot control himself is a weak and immature person. Maturity comes with the ability to control and delay gratification. Ability to control yourself. There are many people that are not Christians that have never raised up their hands against their wife or husband before. And you ask them, ah, these guys don't have the Holy Spirit. How did they do it? Because every man was made in the image of God. Muslims, Buddhists, every man was made in the image of God. And so we have a creative ability of God in us, regardless of whether you are a Christian or not, you have the ability to say no. You have the ability, if you will not put food in your nose, you put it in your mouth. Then you should know that if you see poison coming into your marriage, into your life, through abuse, I will not do it. Now there are extreme cases where people are supernaturally manipulated to abuse their spouses. We cannot rule that out in Africa. There are extreme cases where people are actually summoned spiritually. The man has been behaving well. The mother comes to the house, the mother-in-law, plans and does something to them, and they begin to misbehave. And they begin to cast spell on the man. Those things are real and they happen. Let nobody deceive you that they don't happen. They happen very well in Africa. Abuse can result in damage or untimely death. Any kind of abuse can result in untimely death. I've had the cases of men that committed suicide because they were abused by their husbands. I've had the cases of women that go, went into depression. From depression, other diseases entered their body. Then they became sick and diagnosed with terminal disease, and then they died because the man was abusing them sexually. Sexual abuse, financial abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, all of these abuses can break down the immune system of a man. Proven findings in science. Abuse can break down immune system. When depression sets in, all kinds of things begin to happen. And the body system begins to misbehave, diseases come in, and the person is diagnosed with the disease, and the person dies. Abuse can result in damage, temporary damage, or permanent damage, or even death. Abuse can result in suicide, depression, Down syndrome. Among children, abuse can result in poor grades, depression, suicide tendency. Among children, as when you see a child becoming quiet and like a recluse in an environment of abuse something is knocking at the door in the western world they have made provisions to get those children out of those homes and take you take good care of them because they can kill themselves at any time and something that surprised me most was this they discover that education does not necessarily stop abuse in fact they found out that people that abuse their wife most are educated people. I couldn't believe my, my ears. People that abuse their wife most or their husband are people that are educated and are, high, are at the very top of their career. Directors of companies, senior manager, a business mongol. Why do you think that happens? Financial status. That was another research finding. When people's financial status rises and they become more financially okay and sound they begin to turn to monsters in the house and they become uncontrollable and they found that there are people women who do not have qualifications they are less likely to abuse their husband so there is a correlation between abuse and education that is sad when you are educated it should actually stop abuse. Normally, a man that is educated should be able to think deep and think smart. But that is not the case. Abuse is an internal situation of a man. And it does not have anything to do with education. Professors beat their wives. PAD holders slap their people. They slap their husbands. But we have to stop it. And I want to give you two different things that can help us to stem the tide of this monster in africa and i want you to make a commitment too that as i am going into 2018 all the abuses that i have got i have gone through all the people have abused my children 
my wife, my husband, I will not do it again in 2018. You can do it. The government must take an active role. If a society is full of abuse and the government force is ants, it will not stop. White people abuse their people too. All kind of violence and crimes in America, in Canada, in England. But they have systems and structures. They have laws that regulate all of these practices. Laws that protect women, that protect children, that protect the elderly. Some of those laws are in many African countries, but they are very weak. They don't implement them. They don't implement them. Some that are implemented are, are thwarted. People go behind the scene and bribe lawyers and bribe judges. So when they want to sentence a man to jail because he abused his wife, they make sure that they, they reduce the terms. So the government has a role to play. That is why it is very important to ensure that you elect credible leaders into positions of authority. Everything depends on it. Everything. The only thing that doesn't depend on it is your ability to go to heaven. When you die as a Christian, only Jesus can sort that, that, that problem out. But everything you will become in that nation depends on leadership. Except you leave that country and go to another country. So we must enact laws and enforce those laws. When men know that when they slap their wife, they will go to jail for 20 years. And they see MDs of companies being jailed. Pastors in churches being jailed. Everybody will put their hands in their pockets when the hands are scratching them. <laughs> when the woman knows that when I abuse my husband deliberately with proven evidence, sexually, financially, my husband can sue me to court and I will have to either apologize to the court and promise I won't do it again or I will face the fine. Everybody will stop. Normally, we shouldn't drag ourselves into the court of law to settle family issue. We should settle it in the house, but not in this generation. This generation does not know amicable resolution again. The generation you and I live in now, we don't know amicable resolution. <laughs> so many people are better off being taken to courts or taken to different government agencies that can work on them or pass them through so many care, so many tutorship, so many trainings to change their mindset. There are different things the government can do. Number two, there must not be silence. This is a subject I should be able to talk about for the next one hour, but I'm stopping now. Silence. If you are being abused, don't keep silence. I don't want anybody to hear about my relationship. Leads people to the grave. In our culture, we don't invite third parties to our marriage. In our generation now, that is taking people to the grave. It is taking people to the grave. Silence is almost being equal to untimely death now. If that man has thrown a bottle at you, and the first time he apologized, second time he threw a knife at you, then he apologized. Third time he pressed your neck on the wall, and apologized. The day is coming, he's going to finish the, the entire project. You look for somebody very credible. I'm not saying that you go and report your husband to the police or whatever. There are different variants to it, depending on what the man has done. But you have a very trusted person that can come in and speak to him. In any way you will do it, I can rec I mean, recommend any strategy. There are different variables here. This, uh, there are some men that are genuinely remorse, and they beg their wife, and they stop it. There are others that continue to do it, continue to do it. In either case, it is when you are alive as a man or as a woman that you can accept apology of your of your partner. Abuse on children, abuse on husbands, abuse on wives in any form must be stopped. And you can do it. I can do it. Let's make our churches better places. Let's make our homes better places. Let's make our society better places. If you stop physically abusing people, you stop using abusive languages, and I stop, and 10,000 Africans stop calling people names on the road. Do you know how decent our society will become? So the change does not begin with them. The change begins with you and I. You and I, 
The change begins with us. The change begins with us. This is a subject people spend seven years to study in the university. PhDs, abuse, social justice. I've just touched, I've just scratched the surface. It's a very deep subject. But I hope you have learned a lot this afternoon. And you will make up your mind that today, from today, no matter what that man does, does to me, I will insult him again. No matter what my wife does to me, I will give her money if she needs money from me. No matter what my husband does, I will not starve him of sex. I will not starve him of sex. I will do my own parts. I will play my own role. Our society will be transformed. And as you go into 2018, you will go there as a brand new person. Abuse does no society any good. It retards the society. It leads to untimely death and violence. It brings depression. It brings suicide. It increases rates of suicide. It causes poor grades among children. Children that grow up in a home full of abuse, they don't concentrate in the class and their grades are affected. Some of them replicate what their parents have done in greater proportion. Abuse has nothing good to offer any society. Hashtag, we say no to abuse in Africa. Thank you so much for taking time. Please help me share this um, this seminar, this teaching on your timeline. I see you again tomorrow for another explosive seminar on value systems change agenda. As we go into 2018, we are going there as better people. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.